yes means yes, visions of female sexual power and a world without rape. Also with us, Jacqueline Friedman, co-author of the book, and you wanted to react. Yeah, I mean, Latoya knows, you know, my heart goes out to her and, and I have my own stories, but um, I wanted to point out that there are some things in her story which are very common and, and point to the dynamics we're trying to address in the book. One is the idea of a, who is a good victim, who is a legitimate rape victim, and that um, really the culture sees a good victim, one where we, we need to seek justice as someone who is a virgin, almost always white and skinny and pretty and young, you know, and, and any, anyone who deviates from that standard, their worthiness as a victim gets called into question by the culture immediately, and that's one of the things we're trying to question with this book. So here's a, I guess you could call it a good victim question on our website. Somebody writes, if I go out and drink and get mugged, while the mugger should absolutely be punished, it was pretty stupid of me to start with, right? You know what? There's a lot of stupid things we do in life. Almost everything that's fun has an element of stupidity to it. We need to be able to live our lives and go and have fun experiences sometimes. So um, I really, I honestly, I really hate that argument. And, and my essay is called In Defense of Going Wild, which is about how women are told not to do these stupid behaviors. But the truth is, we do these behaviors. We go out and party with our friends. We have sex, God forbid. You know, we do these things because they're fun. And telling people that they're risky is never going to stop them from doing that because that's part of life is risk. Talk more about your essay, In Defense of Going Wild, or How I Stop Worrying and Learn to Love Pleasure and how you can too. The essay is basically about this model which is inherent in every drinking and rape girls beware story which is girls need to police themselves, they need to not seek out you know parties or drinking or sex, you know they need to not dress skimpily, we all know what those those messages are um, because they might get raped. Now first of all that erases all responsibility from men um, who really are the key and you know without Without the man, without the rapist, there's no rape. <laughs> they are the key in this scenario, and they're almost always erased from that conversation. And second of all, telling girls this isn't going to work. All girls know this from the age of three. You know, we, we see little law and order. We see it everywhere. Our mothers tell us, you know, we need to be careful. But do we all go out and do it anyway? Sure, because it's fun, because it's part of life, and because pleasure is a, an essential human right. And to tell half of the population not to seek it because another <clears throat> half of the population might harm them is really a violation of our human rights. Moral of the story, as you write it in the essay, quote, rape is not a risk inherent in unregulated partying or sexual behavior. Right. Rape is a risk inherent in being female in this culture, and that's what we're trying to, cr to change. Because now, the blogosphere erupted back in 2007 after a handful of people started talking about something they call gray rape. Oh. Is gray rape different from not rape? I'll let Latoya give her answer in a minute, but I don't think so. I think the problem, I, I think that it is. I think that the construction of gray rape is that it's a rape. It's a sexual assault or a rape in which the woman is not sure if she should feel guilty or not, if she had some responsibility. But I gotta tell you, that's like 80% of the rapes because we live in a culture, because of all those not rapes that Latoya was talking about, where women are taught not to not to know their own sexual desires and not to want sex. And so if we're always confused about whether or not we're supposed to want it or if we're bad to want it, then rape is confusing. When